Hi everyone. Some of the dumbest things flat earthers cite as proof that the earth is flat have to do with observations in the sky. Not only do these observations not at all prove that the earth is flat, they in fact falsify the flat earth hypothesis. Easily. The most common belief among flat earthers regarding the sun is that it moves in a roughly circular orbit around the North Pole at an altitude of 5,000 miles, or 8,000 kilometers. <laughs> they believe that the sun only illuminates the part of the Earth that's closest to it, and that's what gives us night and day. <laughs> okay, so... At this point, everyone with a functioning brain can see one huge problem. On a flat Earth, the sun is always up. At night, in reality, the sun is down. But no, say the flat earthers, because perspective. As the sun moves away from your location, it will appear to move closer and closer to the horizon. That is, the angle between the horizon and the sun in your field of view will get smaller, reaching zero as the distance to the sun goes to infinity. Okay, let's start listing the problems. First off, does this look like the path the sun takes across the sky? Is this really what we observe? Because it doesn't look familiar to me. I see the sun going from the eastern horizon to its highest point in the south and then down to the western horizon. Depending on your location and the time of year, the highest point might be in the north, but an arc from horizon to horizon is what we're all accustomed to. And hey, let's look at it from somewhere on the southern hemisphere. Does this look anything like what we observe? In this model, sunset occurs when the sun is at infinite distance, which it never is because it's always somewhere above the finite disk, at a distance which is about the same as half the disk's radius. Another angle that would be zero at infinite distance is the angular diameter of the sun. At sunset, which would never occur, the sun would appear as a point. It doesn't. As usual, flat earthers also fail at basic trigonometry. Based on the model they provided, we can actually calculate the minimum angle between the horizon and the sun. This would occur when the observer is at the edge of the earth, now there's something I never thought I'd hear myself say. At midnight during the December solstice. That is, when the sun's orbit has its greatest radius in this model. You know, when in reality Antarctica experiences midnight sun. This radius would be equal to the radius of the southern tropic, which on the flat Earth would be the distance between it and the North Pole, which is about 14,300 kilometers, but let's round it up to 15,000. This puts the sun at a horizontal distance of about 35,000 kilometers from the observer's location, and its altitude is supposedly 8,000 kilometers. <laughs> so simple trigonometry gives an angle of 12.9 degrees between the sun and the horizon. So yes, there will be midnight sun, but so will it be everywhere else, every night. And how do the flat earthers explain this obviously false prediction of their model? They don't. They'll claim there's no midnight sun in the Antarctic or something like that, and that everyone who claims to have been there is lying. But that completely misses the point. According to their own model, the sun can never be seen below 12.9 degrees above the horizon anywhere on Earth. Yet everyone who doesn't live near the poles can see it set every damn night. To further show my point, we can all agree that the North Pole experiences constant night during the December solstice, right? Well, the horizontal distance to the Sun would only be 15,000 kilometers that night, giving an elevation angle of 28.1 degrees. How can you have night when the Sun is almost 30 degrees above the horizon? And this is as low as it can ever get as seen from that location. And we're not done. The night sky also presents a bunch of problems for flat earthers. For one, it can be seen, but that's not the end of it. As covered in part one, flat earthers have to deal with the fact that different stars are seen from the two hemispheres. This is trivial to explain on a spheroidal earth, but on a flat earth there are several problems. Just as with the sun, any star that can be seen from one place on earth must be visible from everywhere on earth in this model. 
Sure, sunlight would be an issue, but I'm talking about the simple fact that if a star is above the horizon as seen from one location, it's above the horizon as seen from everywhere on the flat Earth. Finding out the distances to stars according to flat earthers is hard because they give different figures. Some claim they're the same distance away as the sun, which makes very little sense. Are they on a flat plane or something? If so, how can there be stars close to the horizon? Others say they're on a dome or a sphere, presumably with at least the same radius as the flat earth, about 20,000 kilometers, which of course is actually half the earth's circumference. Others say there's no way to know. But what the hell, since I want to calculate the elevation angle of Sigma Octantis, the southern pole star, as seen from the North Pole, the fair thing to do is use the smallest number as this will give the smallest angle. So 8,000 kilometers. <laughs> Unless of course we want to put it on a dome and have it skimming the ground. In that case this gives us an elevation angle of zero. The actual elevation of Sigma Octantis, as seen from the North Pole, is approximately minus 90 degrees. It's 90 degrees below the horizon. With a 20,000 km horizontal distance and an 8,000 km vertical distance, we get an elevation angle of 21.8 degrees, so nowhere near what we observe. What? Perspective? Of course, this would also be the lowest possible elevation of Polaris. Regardless of where on Earth you are when you make the observation, putting the stars on a rotating sphere or something like that, like many ancient cultures did, would only make the problem worse as it would increase the altitude of Polaris to 20,000 kilometers, making the minimum elevation angle 45 degrees instead. An even larger sphere would make it even worse. I'd ask if it hurts to be wrong like this all the time, but flat earthers are probably too stupid to experience pain. But we're not done. Standing on the North Pole, obviously Sigma Octantis is to the south, but would that be left, right, forwards, backwards, what? On a spheroidal Earth the answer would be yes, because technically it's below you, past the planet that's under your feet blocking your view. But on a flat Earth, it has to be straight above every point of the Earth's edge, because the South Pole would be a circle around the flat Earth instead of a point. What? Perspective? How can you see the same star in the South looking from South Africa as from Australia or Argentina? Is it smeared out all along the horizon or something? Um. Uh, 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 uh. Perspective? On a flat Earth, there cannot be a single point around which the stars appear to revolve other than Polaris. In reality, that's not what we see. Even if they split the sky along the equator and have the two parts spin in opposite direction, the central star around which they would both be rotating is Polaris. Now let's go back to daytime and talk about why flat Earthers think the sun is so close. Never mind the whole point of increasing the distance will only increase the angles. Crepuscular rays, or god rays as they're often called in the computer graphics industry, occur when sunlight passes through gaps in clouds, overhead foliage, or something similar that gives a high contrast between light and shadow. Flat earthers correctly point out that these rays appear to converge as you trace them back to the sun. If the sun were 150 million kilometers away, they would be practically parallel. And in a delightful case of irony, they forgot about f***ing perspective! Yes, the rays do appear to converge, but they are actually pretty much parallel. The reason they don't appear that way is that if the sun is in front of you, obviously the rays are coming toward you. If you stand between two parallel lines, like railway tracks, they appear to converge in the distance. You know, perspective! In some cases, around sunrise and sunset, crepuscular rays can actually extend across the sky, and as you probably expect, unless you're a flat earther, they do indeed converge in both directions, just like railway tracks. Parallel lines appear to converge as a result of perspective. Well, I think that's about enough stupid for now, but as you've seen, 
the flat earth hypothesis has been falsified yet again. Easily. See ya.